So I've never really done this before, but I'm really excited because this is my first certified, like verifiable uh, antique sword. I, I also have a Dayak Mandao in my collection um, from Borneo, but it's hard for me to tell whether or not that piece is a, you know, just sort of like a tourist piece that they may have made, or if it was actually something that was owned by someone from the Dayak tribe. Um, that piece is specifically Yvon. Um, this here is a Wilkinson Royal Artillery Officer's Sabre. Um, I have my <laughs> kind of low quality um, practice saber from Cold Steel that I've been using. Um, not the ideal thing. And you'll, you'll see the differences between the two, but I just kind of wanted to show you what a modern replica of fairly cheap value. Um, this is under $100, I believe. Um, and also, you know, not sharp. <laughs> it's for practicing. Um, but I thought it'd be cool to kind of compare the two. Um, so I, I haven't seen this yet. I've seen it in pictures, obviously. <laughs> and I'm super excited about it. Um, and I, I don't know too much about the sword. I, I know other Wilkinsons of this time period might, you know, are, are numbered. Um, but this is during a time period from 40, 1845 to 1854 where they weren't numbered. Um, and then I believe this sword in particular also has some of the, uh, like the maker's mark rubbed off, but it's obviously a Wilkinson based on other design details. Um, there's some really fine etching on this blade. Oh, and I'm, I'm just now starting to see it. I'll, I'll try to bring it closer to camera once I have gotten this blade fully unshod. Um, hard for me not to just like go full bore, but definitely don't want to damage anything, especially in the, you know, like the, the fabric or the race skin grip. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. Now we're starting to see it. <laughs> Since this is an antique blade, I wanna be very careful that I'm not getting my finger oils on it. Um, so I will be wearing gloves while I touch it. Um, high carbon steel like this rusts fairly easily, um, so good care practices, you know, just like any, like modern replica or modern fetter, um, oiling it, keeping it dry, so, sorry, I thought I could just pull this off. <laughs> feel a little silly wearing gloves like this in California right now, but it's actually a little, a little chilly. Well, not chilly. <laughs> it's nice out today. It's like 70s, 60s maybe. <laughs> um, oh, no, okay. So he's, he's wrapped the tip too. Oh, you can take a nice look. Um, it's a little hard for me to see what you guys can see on the camera. I've literally just taped my iPhone <laughs> to the, uh, to a tripod. Very professional setup. Hope you're not too impressed. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a uh, first look at the blade. You can see, hopefully the camera's focusing. Um, you can see the uh, etching in there. Um, this is service sharpened, uh, so this blade is sharp. Um, not quite sure to what level. Ah, seems fairly dull. <laughs> so no, no risk of uh, injuring myself here. Uh, let's check out the other side of the blade. Also, um, some really nice etching work. I really love the deep fuller on this blade. Um, let me move it back here. Maybe we can see it a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I really, really love the deep fuller 
that we get on this blade here. Um, contrary to popular belief, this is not a blood groove. Um, this is actually done to increase rigidity of the blade and to reduce weight at the same time. It's sort of like the structural integrity of an I-beam. You have a flare along the spine of the blade. It gets thinner through here and then again gets bigger, gets thicker. Um, it just increases the overall strength while lightening the blade to make it more nimble in the hand. Ooh, this feels good. <laughs> much, much more well balanced than the, uh, the cold steel. There's a really beautiful distal taper to this that I didn't quite notice until, you know, I, I started sort of seeing down the line of the blade while using it, um, just doing a few flourishes here. It's really gorgeous. Um, it's because of this tape off the end though. Let's see what else is under here. Um, oh, just to compare to the cold steel, about the same length. Um, weight wise, I can't remember what the official weights are on these. Um, I would say this one feels slightly more weighty um, and I, I feel the weight more Let's see where the balance is yeah, the balance point is isn't too bad on this um, the cold steel blade is not very doesn't feel very good in the hands but has like sort of a similar balance point um, Definitely, this is more nimble, <laughs> even though it's heavier. So as you can see, I've removed the tape from the blade now. Um, there's still a little bit of tape residue. I'm gonna have to figure out what the most efficient way to remove that is without damaging the blade. Um, but yeah, the, the blade tip looks really nice. I, I actually love the nicks in this blade. You know the the history of it you know this this looks like it definitely saw some action um, and while I'm very much non-violent I do appreciate sort of the the history of these items um, and sort of the beauty that went into developing martial arts and uh, swordsmanship things like that and there's something about, you know, like the, the Disney upbringing, the expectations or desire to want to be a hero. I don't know, it's something that's always been a part of my life. Like I've loved, you know, games, stories that involve heroes, um, everything from Chronicles of Narnia, Tolkien's works, um, you know, all that stuff, Legend of Zelda hugely influential on me um, and I spent most of my childhood running around in the desert behind my house you know pretending to be a hero with like a fake sword that I made <laughs> um, out of wood and uh, a shield and <laughs> um, so there's something sort of nostalgic about it um, although it, it does remind me of the web comic where it's that first scene from the first Legend of Zelda and we see Link go into the cave and the old man is there and he tells him that it's dangerous and he should take the sword and um you know Link you know asks basically like is this sword I don't know uh, is it power is it will it protect me is it good and the answer is no this this sword is a burden <laughs> 